morning and welcome to Wake Up Well. We're continuing our series through the Psalms and today we're at Psalm 34. And to give a bit of context for it, this is a psalm that catches us um, hearing David praising God after God has rescued him. He was being chased by Saul, took refuge in the Philistine city of Gath, and then to, when he, for fear of being discovered, he feigned madness and was able to escape from then. So we can read that narrative in 1 Samuel 21, but Psalm 34 we get some of the inner workings of David. And from what you know of David already, you won't be surprised to, to hear that he starts off verse 1. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. He's so exuding with God um, and how good God has been to him. He talks about this all the way through the psalm and then goes on to say, whether in good times or bad times, fear of the Lord will always cause, cause us to be saved and safe. And there's a verse here that really catches my attention. Verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Now I'll confess, in this shutdown time I have spent more time than I would normally looking for different meal ideas, looking at recipes and drawing over the pictures of them. But none of them are any good to me unless I actually cook them and then unless I actually eat them, they won't nourish me. So what does it mean? How do I taste and see that the Lord is good? Well, there's a clue here in verse 5 and we read here, those who look to him are radiant. So we know, we know from general expressions, don't we? If we say someone looks well, we might say, you look radiant. Um, perhaps you can think of someone in your life who you think radiates God. Um, perhaps people have said it of you in the past as well. It's not something people notice for themselves, but other, others notice around. And my guess is um, that these people who radiate goodness and God would spend quite a lot of time hanging out with God. We talk about spiritual disciplines, or perhaps more helpfully thinking of them as holy habits, Things that we intentionally do to hang out with God. They're choices that we make. It doesn't come naturally to us. It's choices that we make. And then over time, as we get used to developing these habits, they become second nature to us. It's a bit like teaching a toddler to say please and thank you. It can take years before it becomes absolutely natural for them to say please and thank you. And that's what, what these people who radiate God, they probably spend their time with these holy habits. There are various ones we can think of, and we've come to the end of this week of um, our prayer week at, at the well, haven't we? Where we've been encouraged to fast and to join in with corporate worship and to spend time praying on a 24-7 prayer cover. All of these are great disciplines. And I would just ask you, what do you want to carry on from that now that that week's over? It's great and important for us to do that as a body, but it's really important that we do it as individuals. What holy habit would you like to continue? And I would suggest that one of the most important ones is scripture. Chewing on scripture, mulling it over in your mind, thinking on it, chewing on it, letting your body absorb it. It's close to your mind through the day. It, shapes your words, it ch shapes your thoughts and your actions. Find ways that we can chew on the word of God. So I would put it to you. <laughs> what challenge would you like to take from this? Is there a holy habit that you would like to invest more time in and do regularly? We know that if we want to be nourished, there's no point just eating a good meal once a week. We need to eat good food regularly. If we want to be a fit athlete, we know we need to train regularly, not just go on a long run once a fortnight. We need to do things regularly to build up the spiritual muscles here. So what's, what is it that you would do? And I would suggest, why not start with a habit of feasting on God's word? Bon appetit!